1996, I interviewed three punk rock moms about their lives and values. In 2006, we filmed again to see what had changed for them and their children. Thank God I'm in the university. I've been accepted to the university so that I don't have to, uh, hopefully, the, the theory is that if you go to the university, you don't have to make $4.25 an hour for the rest of your life. You might even make $5 an hour. Gosh. So, but now I have to work so that I can pay to go to school. <laughs> Then I can get over my addiction to the weird neurosis of living in the city and living around a lot of people. I'm going to go live out in the woods and uh, build a house just like a little house on the prairie. <laughs> well, I moved more than seven times in seven years throughout this 10 year period. I went to my mother's wedding. I, I graduated from Santa Fe with an AA and went into UF as an anthropology major and and then got a call from my mother saying that she was had cancer. I just flew straight to Los Angeles and with Tessa and got off the plane. Um, some friends of the family shuttled Tessa away and I went straight to the hospital and watched my mother die. Float out the window basically is how I felt it was. I stayed in Los Angeles where she was living with my little sister and her stepdad for a month or more. While I was there, I was really, really lonely and really, really sad. And on her birthday, I took the guitar over to this bar and played an open mic. And, and then I made friends with this guy, Nick. And I came back to Gainesville and everything was completely different and I felt like the whole world was having a good time and I was having a terrible time and I couldn't understand how anyone could laugh even. And I just, I knew like everything had to change after that. So I decided to meet up with Nick who was in Philly at the time. While we were hanging out there, Nick's brother died. That was when all of a sudden I made this big connection between me and Nicholas that we both had like suffered in this way that I felt nobody else ever could understand. That was in the summer, and by the fall, he came to Gainesville, and we were having a really good time, and I just, I don't know what happened, but we just decided to get married and went to the courthouse on Halloween and got married, and everybody was like, I asked Tina to be a witness and my friend Dirk, and thought, everybody thinks I'm making a mistake, and I didn't really care, because I didn't have anything to lose anymore. I only had 20 cents in the bank and, like, whatever, you know? <laughs> My mother was dead, I was a drunk, everything sucked. Except for Tessa, of course, I mean, all that was, I don't know. So I had to get out of here, we got married, we decided to move to New York. Cecil was a planned baby, and that's unlike me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we were like so much in love that we said, let's have a baby. And then 9-11 happened, and that just blew me out of the water. Tessa had taken the train underneath the World Trade Center like 20 minutes before on the A train, basically. I was doing chores in the kitchen, listening to the radio, and on the radio, I heard blah, 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 a plane hit World Trade Center, and I thought, whoa, and I went into the living room and changed the channel, and Cecil starts screaming, ah, give me Sesame Street, and I'm like, stop it, stop it, there's something going on. I change the channel, immediately there's live coverage of it, and what I immediately see is this enormous shadow of a plane coming across the buildings. Like, it wasn't the plane, it was the shadow of it, and this huge explosion, and then the TV went out. Pshhh. I tried to call the school, it was busy. I ran downstairs, and just, some random woman that was walking down the street, I said, something terrible is happening at the World Trade Centers. And she said, I know, I know, I'm coming, I'm going home right now. I don't know what's happening. And I said, my daughter's at school over there. And it seemed a little too personal for total strangers. And after that, it was very much like that in the city, thank God, because otherwise nobody would have survived. 
I called my girlfriend Michelle, who also had a daughter at the same school. She came down to the apartment, but we ended up walking into Manhattan. There was maybe one other person walking in the direction that we were walking, and it just felt wrong. It was totally strange. And we walked for more than four hours at high pace. We got the kids, and the girls were oblivious to what had happened. And then you realize, okay, okay, the whole idea is to protect these kids from the terror that I'm feeling now, you know? So immediately we were in high powered gear to get the fuck out of there. We buy this piece of land, like a space down from Tina, and we designed a house and started building. We moved in with Tina and lived with her for 10 months. And then we got one apartment, then we got another apartment, and then we finally moved into the house. <laughs> and now we're here. I'm a sandwich maker, slash waitress, slash cashier, slash assistant cook. I love it. I do. I think it's great. I get to deal with people. I'm into that. I can talk, make small talk with people, learn weird new facts, whatever. But on the other hand, like, I do uh, have notions of, like, I should have more glamour in my life and be more respected or something, you know? But then I'm like, well, that's bullshit. I stand for everybody that deserves to be respected. You know, the lawyers are coming in waiting for their food and they like it, so, you know, why is their job more important than mine? I don't know. Have you changed cities, schools, or jobs? If so, why? Join the conversation through video responses or comments on allswellandfair.com or any of our social media sites.